Hello guys, welcome back to this series on <clears throat> pre-processing resting state fMRI data. So in this video, we'll see the need for normalization, uh, the need for going into the MNI space. And then we'll see how we can map uh, our subjects into that space. And finally, we'll see what is smoothing. Now can we do that? Okay, so that's uh, the contents for this video. And this video will more or less complete the entire pre-processing that is essential for uh, resting state fMRI data okay so let's get started so before uh, doing anything in SPM let us first uh, check what is the need for a normalization or what is the need to go in MNI space so I have opened FSL eyes over here so let me just uh, add the regressed image that we had uh, produced in the last video, in the previous video. Uh, this is the regressed image. So let me just open that. Okay, so okay, so this is how the regressed image looks like. And now let me open a regressed image of a different subject. Okay. <clears throat> So now I have also create, I have also, I am using a new subject. So we were pre-processing this subject all this while. Now I have also added a new subject. I have done the pre-processing till our previous video. So it is just, uh, we have, I mean, I have regressed the time series. So I have done this. So let me just open this file as well. Okay, so here we have the second subject's data that is subject 10273 data and subject 10225 data over here. Okay, so you can see there is a lot of misalignment between the two uh, scans, right? This is very much up and this is down, right? So this is a native space for this subject 10225 and uh, this is the native space for this subject 10273. So you see that the native space of every subject is different. Right. So now say I want to do some analysis where say I want to uh, see a particular region of all the subjects together and do some statistics or statistical analysis on that. I won't be able to do because these two are not aligned. Right. So one way that you can do is you can co-register both of these images, okay, uh, to one of the reference and then go forward, right? That is one way. But say if you have hundred images, then what will you do, right? Because it is very much possible that you get a lot of subjects and you have to analyze them or conclude something from that, right? So it is not very. Um, recommended that you analyze uh, that you co-register all the subjects to the first subject or something like that right so then what to do so that is where the mni space comes into the picture okay so this is the mni space and so here we use mni 152 that is uh, so this was created using uh, 152 different subjects and this is the T1 weighted image of that and 2 millimeter says this has a voxel resolution of 2 millimeter okay so this is the standard MNI space that uh, people use and we register all the different subjects that we have onto this space okay so that is the reason why we require normalization so that we can have all the subjects in one space, one standard space and then do our analysis on that. Okay, so that's somewhat the theory of the MNI space. Uh, if you want more detailed explanation, I would recommend you to go the, to this uh, website. I'll put this into the link below. So here uh, there is a good brief history of the MNI space. There is also something known as the Tellerike Atlas or the Tellerike space. So you can also read about that as well. So this was actually used previously 
nowadays uh, spm uses only mni uh, space so you you can go through this and uh, read through this as well okay okay so i guess that is pretty much uh, what i wanted to share <clears throat> now let us go to spm and start normalizing okay so we'll click on normalize now you can see there are three options again there is estimate write and estimate and write so let us first see what estimate does do we require estimate uh, or not let us see that okay okay so here is estimate okay now let me just open segmentation also side by side so that i can show you something so segment so if you remember i have used segment in last to last video okay so okay so here we have normalized if you see the parameters are quite similar to that of segmentation so there is bias regulation so you can see we had bias regulation in segmentation as well then there is uh, bias f w h m so that is also there over here then there is uh, tissue probability map i uh, did give you a brief introduction on the tissue probability map as well uh, then european brains east asian brains and so on that is over here right <clears throat> then warping re regularization this is also there over here okay and then smoothness and sampling distance is also there over here okay so you can see that everything that is required to estimate the the deformation thing is already done in segmentation okay if you remember i i had given you some details of why we are using this deformation field okay so there are two kinds of deformation field that we want one is the inverse and the other is the forward okay so the forward deformation field will enable you to move between the native space that is uh, so for this subject this is the subject's native space so to move from native space to the standardized space to move native space to standardized space we need the forward uh, deformation field and if in case uh, during your analysis you want to get back to the subject's native space from the uh, standardized space then you will require <clears throat> the inverse uh, deformation field so if you remember in that video i had asked you to uh, keep both inverse and forward so that we can <clears throat> uh, use both of them whenever required right so we will definitely require the forward uh, during pre processing but we don't require inverse in pre processing however during some analysis you may require it okay so so that's it so here we can understand that there is no need to again run this estimate because we have already done that during segmentation okay hence we will not do estimate okay so let me just take it so since our estimate is done the only thing that is left is right so hence we are going to write uh, the uh, images i mean there is no need to do estimate estimate and write will also have the same thing so it will estimate first and then write right so we don't need to do this as well because we have already done the estimate estimation right hence the thing that we have to do is write okay we'll just write the images fine so let us open a new subject <clears throat> i double clicked on it so there are two subjects right so there is only one subject that i want to write now uh so here you have to enter the deformation field so in the anat folder uh, an an anatomical folder you will find the deformation field so i y is the inverse deformation field y is the deformation field so you'll have to select y images to write this is this is the image that you want to normalize okay so now we have regressed the time series 
so this regressed output is the output that we have to choose over here let me write regress uh, so that all others are gone okay there is this thing i will i will talk about this a little later okay <clears throat> So one to two hundred. So I am using this. Press shift, click here. All the one fifty two files are selected. Press done. Okay, now writing option. Now there is something known as a bounding box. How big do you want to keep this box? So this is the default value. However, I would want you to change this default value to this one i'll tell you the reason why i'm doing this uh, but for now just let us change this okay uh, here you have to specify the voxel size okay so a two millimeter voxel is uh, fine i mean you could also use a one millimeter or a three millimeter the larger the voxel size the less the data required okay so if you choose a three millimeter voxel the data or the memory that this particular file will uh, use would be less but it would be more i mean uh, that would be more a smaller image in some sense okay and if you use one millimeter then that will be a larger image and it will choose uh, and it will use large uh, memory as well okay then there is interpolation that we have to use so let us keep it uh, as it is and then the prefix will be w okay so now what i have done is i have already uh, done normalization on an old uh, thing on an old subject I, not an old subject but using the old bounding box okay so there was some 78 or some default values over here what i have done is i have already normalized using that uh, old defa uh, default bounding box values and I've kept stored it over here. Now I'm going to use this new bounding box values. Okay, we'll see what is the difference between the two. And then you will realize why this is better than this. Okay, so that is what uh, we are going to do. Now that is for normalization. Also, what you can do is you can smooth the image parallelly. I mean, not parallelly, but sequentially. So here uh, you can just select smooth which image is to smooth so now you have to select which image to smooth you you have not yet normalized the image so i want to smooth the normalized image right so how you'll do that so you can do that by clicking on dependency so what will happen is whatever will be the output of normalize that will automatically come here as an input to smooth okay so both these operations will go sequentially and you will not have to specify it again and again okay uh, so the parameters over here are the uh, the how big do you want the gaussian to be okay so this default is okay now this actually depends on your data so this is something that you might have to change how much smoothing do you want the more value the more smoothing the less value the less smoothing then there is data type there are different data types over here if you want to change the data type and so on so over here let us keep it the same data right then there is something known as implicit masking you can read over here if you want and the prefix after smoothing will be s okay uh, let me run and uh, then let us see the output So this also takes a while to run so i will fast forward the video okay so the processing is done now let us see the output so i'm in fsl file So let me go to that subject. Okay, so here I have the WREG. 
so this is uh, our output so this is the w rec file now let me also open the old file that i had so w old rec file as well okay and right okay <clears throat> so this is the standard mni template uh, this is the new one uh, with the new coordinates uh, that i had put in the bounding box and uh, this is the default coordinate so you can see with the default coordinates there is a small cut that is happening in the border right not the whole brain the whole brain is not coming over here right with the old coordinates but with the new one you can actually get the whole i mean thing so what the default coordinates is doing is it is cutting everything from here which is okay so this is nothing but the skull but still i mean why to uh, cut this particular portion right you can see it over here as well okay so that is the only reason why i ask you to change the coordinates to this and now this is correct and you can see that this is also uh, to the mni i mean aligned to the mni template so we will have to align all the different subjects data to this particular mni template and then we'll be good to go okay so that is pretty much it i mean you can also see the smoothened version so swreg is the smoothened version so this is the smoothened version so you can see how nicely it has smoothed the different voxels over here so yeah that is pretty much it uh, so this more or less completes the whole pre processing uh, that you can do on one subject now uh, <clears throat> there are some small small things that you may want to know so i will make videos related to that and also there is something uh, that is scripting so now it is if suppose you have 100 subject it is not very feasible to always go to the gui and then uh, click on all these things 100 times and then put the different functions etc i mean choose all that and do that right that is not very feasible so what we can do is we can create a script a matlab script so a very simple way is to just go over here view show dot m code this will give you the code the matlab code for whatever modules you have uh, placed over here okay and then what you can do is you can copy all this code and then put it i mean copy this code and then make a script out of it so i have already made a script uh, that consists of all the different things starting from realignment to frame wise displacement to pre processing the non excluded subjects then there is something about skull scripting i'll i'll let you know in a different video then there is core registration segmentation uh, making the mask Um, making wm mask extracting the mean and temporal regression and finally normalization and smoothing so i have ev clubbed everything into one script so uh, if you run this script you'll get everything together okay so i am going to make a video on that as well uh, so stay tuned i'll i'll make a video on scripting as well so yes so that will be some of the next future videos i hope you found this informative thank you so much for watching thank you